the adventure continues in Gibraltar. I'm just entered the upper galleries of Project C, a project completed post-war to provide secure underground fuel storage for the RAF. This complex is absolutely vast, dug into the eastern faces or the eastern slopes of the Rock of Gibraltar. There are a number of chambers filled with huge, normally above ground fuel silos uh, with a mixture of fuels, aviation fuel, diesel, petrol, to supply the RAF uh, at the airfield. Above ground space was so crucial, just as it has been throughout the history of Gibraltar. Uh, the only way really for these projects uh, to be completed is by digging underground. So I'm not alone, I'm here with my friend John, who's just downstairs. As I say, we have entered at one of the upper entrances. Um, so we have to descend this staircase to get down to the first of the actual tunnels. And the site's really just been abandoned, left with most of the equipment, the pipes, the fuel tanks, the electrics, all intact. And it really is a, a holiday destination to come for the, for the more adventurous. We've spent the last two hours in here taking photographs and just really wandering the, oh, it, must be, it must be a kilometre or so of tunnels. You can see these light fittings, um, which look like they're fit for a ship or fit for a submarine. Uh, but actually all the electrical fittings down here would have been EX or explosive rated um, because of the risk of a, of a volatile explosive atmosphere uh, from the fuel vapours. So the likes of the switching on of lights, um, electrical contacts and motors and so on, um, there was a greater risk of explosion of those vapours. So all of this equipment um, is, is really overrated for what we would normally expect to find at these sites. But underground, there's nowhere for the vapors to go. So it looks like there's a lot of, a lot of reasonably modern work has been done. Uh, a lot of this galvanized steel work, this block work, uh, looks relatively new. So I'm not, not quite sure when the last time the site was, was operational. I think, I think it was the 90s. Um, but I'm definitely going to do, do some more reading when we get back. Oh wow! So yeah, we're coming into the the top of one of these one of these fuel tank caves. Here we have three massive tens of thousands of liter fuel tanks. The atmosphere down here is just, just so eerie. Deadly quiet. There are rats. Just in case any of you, if you are thinking of visiting, and are a bit squeamish. They've mostly left us alone. Um, but yeah, scurrying on the the cables of the pipework above us. It's a little bit disconcerting. So I think in total there. Are there are estimated to be about 32 miles of tunnels on Gibraltar. Well, in Gibraltar. The earliest tunneling started hundreds of years ago. Um, and technically the most recent tunnel being the, uh, the tunnel from the airport. And yeah, that is, that is absolutely not a stairway I'm willing, <laughs> willing to go down. Um, it's ramps from here on in. 
So, good signed concrete ramps. So we're gonna make, make our way out of the tunnel now. I'll be passing some of these features that I've mentioned. Each one of the each one of the, the entrances to the tanks is in a room like this. Uh, double doors, an inner and an outer sliding steel door. Uh, the torch, if any of you are interested, that I'm using is the Olight Seeker 3 Pro. Uh, first first real expedition with the torch, and it's it's fantastic. many features that has sadly been vandalised for, as always, no apparent reason. So I think that was the way we came out through the upper gallery, so we'll, we'll have to go back that way. But what this will do, we hope, is give us access to some of the really huge caverns, uh, which haven't seemed to be populated uh, with fuel tanks. If my memory map is correct. Oh, so yeah, oh, here's the top. Into the top of one of the other tanks. That's, that's phenomenal. Just as you'd, as you'd see it. Um, some other huge fuel sites. There's one at Invergordon, you were saying, John? Yeah. Yeah, so somewhere at Invergordon, except external above ground fuel tanks. So these are, I think we've, we've seen videos in the past of people climbing down these stairs and on top of the tanks, but yeah, it's not, not a risk we're willing to take. We are on our holidays after all. Miles and miles of these tunnels. Hopefully you enjoy these these walk around videos. Yeah, normally I'd come for years and just take photographs, but what I'm trying to do now is, is just add an extra layer to the to visiting these sites. Um better for my own my own posterity, but also just to act as a reference. I believe these might still be MOD owned. Um, I, I imagine the reason for that is just the, the decontamination effort to clear these tanks out would be, would be absolutely huge. Probably at this stage, it's not not worth it. Whether for contingency purposes in the future, to um, just to use the tunnels again, or, or just that that cost. I don't think the, the MOD moves terribly quickly when it comes to to decommissioning sites. Still in taking some photographs, we try to stay as close as we can. In sites like this, they are obviously really high risk. Um, and this, you know, the videos like this and photographs is absolutely not an invitation um, to come and do these things. They're obviously at your own risk.
So I think the unfinished chambers are through that door. Either unfinished or unused. We're not, not quite sure. Instantly, the quality is. This is an, an, a very unfinished chamber. Just hardcore rock and floor. Walls generally unfinished. Probably just large enough for a, a truck to to remove the spoil. Oh, and here we are. We're definitely not going to get too close to the edge of this one. Yeah. Totally unfinished. And treacherous, no way out uh, without without external help. So we're not absolutely not going anywhere near the edge there. Neither of us, incidentally, like heights. No. Uh, so perhaps sometimes the dark helps. We can't we can't see how how high up some of these things are. Which also makes scale a problem because we don't we just don't know how. How big anything is. We can't capture how big, how big and really imposing these are. Yeah, phenomenal. And we're so deep in the rock that that water generally doesn't seep down here, so it's it's pretty dry. A few areas of of damp seeking through some fissures in the ceiling, but remarkable. Most of the UK tunnels like this are, are just filthy, filled with wildlife, rubbish. There's a reasonable amount of rubbish in some parts here, but that's mostly water bottles and just general snack wrappers. Not much vandalism. Most of it is steel pipes, steel tanks. Thankfully, there's not much, not much people can do. No windows to break. Our porcelain to smash, which which always seems to be the top of top of everyone's list. So we're now gonna leave what I'm gonna leave are called the upper galleries. And we're gonna start making our way out through the main entrance. Which is which is conveniently open. There is definitely a, a different attitude to, to sites like this abroad. Um, maybe for the reason that it's, it's almost impossible to, to properly secure them. But in one of the other videos of the uh, Northern Defences, we, we met another group uh, who were in wandering around. Got John doing some light painting. Uh, here's the old light marauder, I think. Absolute beast of a torch, 14,000 lumens. Just in incredible for these large open spaces. Uh, just makes it look like daylight. Um, I think my I think my seeker is 4,200. I think. So here is some of the natural features. in the rock, which just discovered uh, while tunneling. So this is the route we're going to take now from the upper gallery down to the main corridor. Uh, I'm going to stop and take some photographs. So I'm going to stop the video here and 
pick you up when I've taken some photographs. So we're back, ready to finish off the Project C fuel tanks at Gibraltar. So this track which leads to the upper galleries comes through this vast chamber which we think was maybe cut or would have been cut for fuel tanks um, but it's currently it's filled with spoil it's very obviously just a, a bit of a spoil heap nearly door nearly works before he locks me in yeah so we've got the the middle layer of the tanks up here uh, but we are going to follow the pipes out towards the exit. Do you see that? All along here. So this paving, these, these concrete paving slabs have been, uh, been put in certainly long after the, the site had, had been constructed. So yeah, if we, if we just nip in here and have a look. So yeah, we're at the, the middle level. Yeah. When we first came in, this was this was our first site, so we thought there was we thought there was only one tank um, per, per bay, per cave, but actually now there are three. And must be worth we're assuming there's a, a lower level to get into the, the floor space but we haven't uh, we haven't ventured down there and the only other way was the, the vertical ladders which as I say we don't we don't need to go down we're playing it safe. Bad of wooden scaffolding boards and scaffolding which long since abandoned for some sort of development project, obviously. Yeah, so one up ahead of us is another uh, exit for the extraction. So, so the equivalent of where I started, except on this, on this lower level. Yeah, same with fire alarm buttons, light switches. Remarkable, really. We're certainly not going up there. I think what we get to here is the junction for all the various pipes coming from the tanks so there's a bit of a bit of a reflection from down there who knows what sort of what sort of creature is watching us so yeah down here was really really interesting so here I have what we think of the pumps for the fuel tanks. I'm putting various valves, one dedicated for, for each fuel source. I imagine there are, there are certainly signs for, for diesel and for aviation fuel. Each of the circuits and pumps is, is a different colour for each fuel. Brown, green, black. Red. And this room does smell of oil. Um, it's been very good the rest of the side, no, uh, no fumes of it, so that, that what we can smell. And there is, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's always a risk with, with poison gases being trapped, trapped down below, but the, the ventilation is, um, is excellent here. There's, we've had a breeze, a breeze on our faces uh, the whole way. 
which really shows the pace testing to the to the construction. So yeah, so here we have some of the colours. We've got the red, black, which is Shell Jet A1 Aviation Jet Fuel, I believe, brown, and then an unspecified. Uh, this, we believe, is building the control room. So we'll, we'll have a look inside. Most of the original switch gear and um, indicator panels are still in place. See how scuttling is, is one of the rats in the pipework. Most of this, as you can see, is um, is that anti-explosive, anti-spark rating that I was mentioning before. We think this is the indicator panel, presumably for warnings or fire, uh, possibly from each of the tanks, uh, maybe, a, maybe a fill fill valve. But yeah, a lot, lot more vandalism here. Uh, a lot more detritus and rubbish. We're just making our way to the exit. Uh, time's now half nine. So we imagine it will it will now be dark. You see the, the sun was setting at the start of this video. And almost almost certainly it's it's dark now. Yeah, so it's not to draw too much attention, I think it'll off the torches. So yeah, here we go. That was a walkthrough of Project C in Gibraltar. So if you like, remember, give it a like and thumbs up. Um, I'm not, not, doing it, not doing it for the views, but maybe a little helps just to, to motivate me. All right, see you on the next video.